David Brewster here from the Three for All, and this is three Paul Gilbert and Marty Friedman licks from 2006. And both Paul Gilbert and Marty Friedman are legends of Shrapnel Records, you know, back in the 80s. And, you know, Paul hit the scene with Racer X, Marty hit the scene with Cacophony, you know, with Jason Becker, and eventually Paul picked up, you know, Bruce Bouye, you know, with Racer X. So these guys are legends of shred guitar, you know, 80s rock and, and metal and into the 90s and beyond, and they're both still active. And I'm definitely a huge Paul Gilbert fan. You know, I featured, uh, you know, chord plays for Racer X and both Mr. Big, and also a three for all, you know, for Paul. And, and his ideas have filtered into a lot of the lessons, you know, on this channel as far as scales and sequencing and, you know, um, connecting octaves and kind of mapping the fretboard and stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm a huge Paul Gilbert fan. I've been a fan since I was a teenager. And then also with Marty, you know, a very interesting and exotic, you know, guitarist. I'm a huge Marty Friedman fan as well. And also, you know, Jason Becker, of course. And then when Marty joined, you know, Megadeth, I loved it. You know, I thought uh, Rust in Peace and Countdown to Extinction, a lot of those albums were brilliant. And this is a really interesting lesson because uh, we're, we're taking some footage from Japan and Paul and Marty are like jamming and uh, there's some cool stuff in this lesson. And speaking of Japan, you know, both of these guitarists definitely found a huge following in Japan and worldwide, of course. I mean, they have followings in, you know, America and Europe and all over the world. But, uh, but they both definitely had this connection with, uh, you know, Japanese music fans and guitarists. And that goes back to definitely to the early days. And, you know, Mr. Big, you know, when Paul was working with them, they blew up in Japan. And they released all sorts of, you know, exclusive, you know, imports and stuff for Japanese fans. And Marty actually lives in Japan. He's a Japanese, you know, celebrity, uh, you know, music celebrity. He appears on TV and concerts, and he works with, you know, Japanese musicians and artists. And it's really interesting, you know, when you hear the big in Japan, you know, reference, which you can trace that back to groups like Cheap Trick and Scorpions and some of those groups, where they really broke, you know, when they kind of toured and played in Japan and kind of opened that door and then they had worldwide acceptance, you know, and, and fame. And it's really interesting that both Paul and uh, Marty have really, you know, they've saturated the entire earth, but they really have made a lot of progress and uh, gained a lot of followers and fans and respect from Japanese, you know, music fans and guitarists. And if you're curious, I did have a lesson in Guitar Player Magazine last year. It was in the August uh, 2019 issue, Tornado of Solos. And that was a tribute to Marty Friedman, Exotic Scales. And uh, definitely, you know, very proud of that lesson, kind of as a tribute to Marty. And I haven't written anything like that for Paul, mainly because he's so active and he does his own instructional, you know, material. But uh, I would like to work on something like that focused on Paul Gilbert because I'm a huge fan of both of these players. But check out the uh, guitar player lesson if you haven't seen that. The licks in this lesson actually came from a, like a DVD or a video uh, from Japan. And it was for Young Guitar uh, Magazine, which is a Japanese you know, guitar magazine. It was back in 2006. And Marty and Paul have appeared on television together, you know, in Japan. Um, I saw some footage of this random kind of game show where they were playing all these riffs by Rush and Kiss and all this stuff and that was really cool. And then uh, it's really interesting to see this footage with them playing and they're jamming, you know. And it's very relaxed and they're just kind of, you know, they got their amps and their, their guitars, you know, kind of assembled and they're seated, you know, just a couple feet apart. But they're literally just jamming back and forth and Paul shows a couple licks, Marty shows a couple licks. And uh, there's some cool ideas, but it's really interesting to notice this kind of tag team between Marty and Paul where they're trading licks and jamming and sharing, you know, their own ideas and stuff. Really cool. And I want to thank my friend uh, Donovan Owenby on uh, Facebook. He posted this yesterday and I already had some ideas, you know, kind of fleshed out. But when I saw the footage that he shared, I thought, man, this is cool. I've never seen this before. And it's about 45 minutes or 50 minutes or so. And I sat there and I watched the whole thing. And then I had that light bulb moment where I thought, well, I'm going to make this into a lesson. You know, I'm going to cop some of these licks and, and share them. So definitely thanks, Donovan, for posting this yesterday. Because I, I fell into it and literally made this lesson from your post. The first lick is from Paul Gilbert. And uh, he's doing this sequence kind of, you know, position shifting uh, A minor pentatonic idea. And it's on the B and the high E string. 
And he does ideas like this a lot, you know, in other other string groupings too. It's not just the B and the high E. But uh, really tasty, you know, and he basically cruises all the way up, you know, A minor pentatonic, something like this. <laughs> One more time. And there you can see we're basically starting, I guess you can think of this as position five of A minor pentatonic. Like the, the position right before the box right there. But he basically starts here and shifts into this E note. And that's the sequence, and he's going to run through that all the way up, you know, the A minor pentatonic in all the positions. But that's the sequence. And then shift into the box right here. And then the position, you know, position two right above the box. Position three. Position four. And then we're basically repeating position five, but an octave higher. And after you do that, then just basically grab this C and he bends that up a step and a half, like this big bend. Something like this. One more time, kind of slower. idea comes from Marty and he's doing this hybrid pentatonic kind of mutant you know chromatic based idea based around a minor pentatonic and uh, it's really interesting kind of a signature you know this exotic passing tone kind of phrasing and Marty's you know very skilled with that type of stuff I love ideas like this and we're still in a and it looks like this <laughs> So right there you can see we're sliding into this A and then climbing up chromatically on the A string. And then right there he starts doing this kind of mutant phrasing. Um, so right there grab that, you know, G to E and then it's F sharp, you know, to E flat. back into that E and then right here grab C slide down to B which is the ninth and then slide that G up to A and then think of this like the blue scale and he's doing like that and the last time bend that G up to A, you know. The next idea comes from Paul Gilbert, and he started talking about Bach, you know, in this segment during the video. And then he starts playing this phrase like this. One more time. So right there you can see we're basically climbing up, you know, the B string chromatically. And then you have this little sequence, um, you know, happening on the, uh, the high E. And it kind of comes down and grabs that A there on the B string. But very slowly, um, you can see he starts with this E note way back here on the 5th fret on the B. And then he does this, you know, kind of 4 note motif. Like that. I mean, it's technically more than, you know, 4 notes in the sequence, but it's just 4 different notes. D, C, B, and A. So grab that E. 
then do that uh, four note kind of motif and then move that note to F and then F sharp and then G G sharp and then just end on A Definitely sounds very baroque, kind of Bachish, you know. Um, and I love those ideas with those kind of passing, you know, those kind of chromatic ideas and passing tones thrown in, because it definitely is a treat for your ears because you're hearing all these different tonalities and implied sounds. But uh, one more time here. <laughs> Such a cool lick. Here's a bonus lick from this footage, and it's technically when Marty and Paul are jamming, and I found this the most interesting. Uh, you know part of the entire video. It's like the 40 or 50 minute video and they're jamming they're doing that scratch and sniff You know kind of jamming which was interesting um, And then Paul starts playing this bending lick and then all of a sudden Marty just stops the entire jam and starts pointing at Paul and uh, You can tell I mean it, it seems like it was actually like real. It doesn't seem like it was scripted especially the way Paul kind of reacts because he's just smiling and uh, cheesing over the entire moment and then, you know, Marty's kind of pointing and they kind of flesh out the lick and then they start harmonizing it together. So before I play it and break it down, let's just watch the footage, which I kind of put these little candid moments together. And then we'll look at this bending lick, which is really cool. <laughs> So if you really watch that footage, you'll notice that the lick actually changes from what Paul originally played and then shows Marty, and then Marty starts playing with it, and there's you, know, you can't really hear their conversation or what they're saying back and forth, but then when they finally do start harmonizing the lick at the end, they've modified it ever so slightly. So I basically, I'm going to show you the original lick that Paul played and kind of shows, and then the mutant or mutated version, you know, that kind of fleshed out when Marty and Paul were kind of trading it back and forth. And then I kind of took Paul's idea from the Bach lick with the chromatic ideas, and I made another variation of this lick. So we're going to learn, you know, one bending lick and two variations of the same idea, which is a great idea. Anytime you learn a cool lick, whether it's bending or sweeping or tapping or whatever, make variations because you never know. You might stumble upon a brand new, you know, phrase or lick. Or turn one lick into a hundred, you know, but it was something like this So right there you're grabbing, you know, B and bending that up basically a whole step And then grabbing that C sharp to E And then right there you're grabbing the flat five E flat bending that up a half step and then ending with G to A so that's the original lick that Paul played during the jam, and it's also the original lick that he showed Marty, because he played it really slow, like this. You know, cool bending lick, for sure. But then during the chain of events during this clip, it actually changes to just major pentatonic, like this. So you can kind of hear that shift between minor and major pentatonic. But with the bending leg. So I took that a step further, you know, mutating this this. So let's 
do that again. Let's move down another half step and do this. And right there, you're gonna bend this B up to C and then, you know, fret that C right there on the B string. And then basically, you know, bend this E flat up to E and you're grabbing F right there on the high E. And that sounds sick. this cool you know minor pentatonic or kind of a hybrid and then major pentatonic and then this kind of intervallic you know idea <laughs> definitely do that with licks as you learn them you know create variations and change you know one note and then change another note and just see what happens when you start moving those things around it's going to wrap this look at three paul gilbert and marty friedman licks from 2006 and definitely two dynamite you know guitarists filled with great ideas and i've learned a lot from studying paul gilbert and marty friedman's music you know licks and sequences and riffs and chord ideas and arpeggios and exotic scales all kinds of stuff string skipping all kinds of stuff. So definitely there's a ton of things you can learn from either one of these players and then finding this footage and seeing them together and they're just, you know, knocking all these ideas out of the park. I was like, wow, this video is killer. And I'd never seen it until, you know, yesterday, technically. So once again, thanks Donovan for posting that on Facebook because I was like, who, what is this? I think I'm gonna, you know, create a new lesson based on this. And I had a ton of other things, you know, kind of waiting like in the wings. But that's how random I am. As soon as I saw the footage, you know, light bulb struck and I felt inspired. I thought this is exactly, you know, what I'm going to make. So anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons and I'll be back with more content and material. Thank you.